is daf is daf lamid ches, and you'll see on the top miserigin. This is the Gemara's answer to the question of Elenia Malka's great contribution of a tavla tablet that had on it the parash of Sota, but according to at least one opinion, you're not allowed to write a section in the Torah. So the answer is Beserigin, that although one pasuk was written in a full form, but the rest was written in an olive based form. Nikonar Nasu Nisan Ludal Sotsov, what were the miracles that were done with the doors contributed by Nikonar for the opening into the Azaratan Rabbana? We learned to the Brisa, Ma Nisan Nasu Ludal Sotsov, Omru, Kshaholach Nikonar Lahavi, Blossos, Me Alexandria, Shal Mitzrayim. He went all the way to Alexandria to bring these doors as a contribution. But Hazi Rosso on his way back, Omidalov Nachshol, there was a storm that threatened to capsize the, the ship, Shabayom Litovo, Notlu Achasman Vitilo Leyam, because of the heavy weight of these copper doors, they threw the sailors took one of the doors, threw it overboard, Adayan Lo Nochayom Misafo, and yet the sea continued to rage and threaten the ship. Bikshu, so they decided Lahatil Es Chaverta to throw the second door overboard. Omad Hu Ukrocha. And Nikonar stood up. He didn't want them to throw the second door. And he hugged the door. Omar Lahem. He said to them, Hatiluni Ima, throw me overboard together with the door. Miad Noch Hayom Mizapo. It's like a miracle like Yonah. And the sea subsided. Nikonar was pained about the loss of the other door. But came in Shigil in Amalashal Akko once he arrived at the port of Akko in Eretz Yisrael. It was unbelievable. A miracle happened, and the other door that was thrown out first was actually uh, hung on to the under the underside of the ship. Yeshom, according to another transmission, Bria Shabiambalato, it was swallowed by a great a well or, or so. And she regurgitated up on the dry land. Regarding this door, Shlomo used to say in a pasuk in Shirashirim, Shirim, the beams of a house are cedar, our doors are cypresses. Don't pronounce it as a brosim, ela birayas. Or Brias Yam, a creature of the sea. All of the gates to the temple were eventually upgraded to gold. And Chutzmi Mishari and Nikra, with regard to the gates of Nikra, they left it in its original state without upgrading it. They had gold, because of the miracles that occurred. And what's probably going on over here is that when the Jews came on Aliyah Shniya, the second commonwealth after the exile in Bavel, they didn't have all that much funds. And later on, they became wealthier. They replaced all the doors, the gates in the temple, and they replaced them with gold. They left Nicanor's copper doors as they were as a reminder of the miracle. Zecher Lines, the Eshomer mothers say, Mipnei Shenechushtan Mutzheves Hoysa. Some say that there was no need to replace these doors with gold doors because the copper shone so brightly, it looked like gold. Rabbi Eliezer and Yaakov Omer Nechoshes Klonitsa Hoysa. It was very fine, refined copper, and it shone like gold. Now we're up to the Mishnah on Daf Lamed Ches. The Elu Lignai. And here we mention those individuals who had talents but fair, failed to share these talents. And they are mentioned here for harsh words. Based Garmu from the house of Garmu, they were experts at producing Lechem upon They didn't want to teach their expertise and share it with anyone. Shall base Avtinas, those who came from the family of Avtinas, 
who are experts in Maisa Akhtoris, and Salamin Maisa Akhtoris, and want to teach and share their expertise with others. They knew how to find the Mala Oshan, as we'll see. Hugras Ben Levi, Hayodeh Parik Bachir. This particular Levi by the name of Hugras knew a method of, of singing. Velorot Salamin didn't want to teach and share with Osman Kamtar, who was in charge of writing. He was a scribe, he didn't want to share his method of writing with any of the others. Alari shown him those who are mentioned in the previous Mishnah, like for example, we mentioned uh, Hilenia Malko and Mudvas and, and Nikonar and so forth and so on. Then we say, we quote the Bozim Zechel Tzadik Uvrochu, we mentioned them for a Brocha because they contributed what they had and shared it with others. And the Migdash owes them a debt of gratitude. But those who are listed here in our mission of Hashem Rishoyim Yerkov. And that is the end of that same Pasuk. And the Pasuk is saying that the name of the wicked will rot. Tana Rabbanu, we learned in a bright, so Beitz, Garmoy, Bikiyim, but Maisa Lechem Aponim. They were the experts in creating the Lechem Aponim. And they didn't want to share their teaching and teach others. Sholchu Chachamim. So the Chacham decided, you know what? Let's fire the base Garmu and we'll replace them with experts from Chutzot. We'll import the Umnin and Alexandria Shal Mitzrayim. These are the craftsmen who are expert bakers. They'll know for sure how to bake the Lechem upon of a Yodim Lefos Kemosom. They certainly knew how to bake Lechem upon of just like the house of Garmu. Veloha Yodim Lirdos Kemon. But what they didn't know is how to remove the loaves from. The, the from the oven, which is a whole chachma. You know, you need a certain expertise to know how to remove it. And the Gemara is going to explain in detail a little bit later on. Halalu masikim ibachutz. In order for these experts, these umnin from Mitzrayim, in order to obviate the need for redia sapas, which is something that they didn't know how to do, what they did was they heated the oven from the outside, open me bachutz, and they would take the dough and smack it up against the outside of the oven. So they didn't have to do radius hapas to take it out of the oven when it was baked. But halolo, but there, the, the real experts, which is based garmu, masikim me bifnim, the ofen me bachutz. I'm sorry, the ofen me bifnim. Not only would they heat the oven from the inside, but they also placed the dough inside the oven because they relied on their ex expertise in Redia Sapas. Halolu Pita Mis Apeshes, the uh, breads that were baked by the Alexandrian ex experts would spoil, would uh, get stale very quickly. Valolu Ein Pita Mis Apeshes. But those that were created by, by the uh, Dharma people, they would not spoil. And the reason for that apparently is because since it was baked inside the oven, when it came out, it was fresh, it was solid, it wouldn't spoil. When the Chacham realized, hey, we got into a bind here, we fired base Garmu, we tried to replace them with these experts from Alexandria and Mitzrayim, and yet they are creating uh, breads that spoil. It's, it's not Lechem Aponim. They realized that the base Garmu were hoarding a special expertise that they had when the rule is that whatever God created, he created to bring out his glory. And if they were endowed with a beautiful talent, they should have shared it. And and Yeshayo Novi says, whatever I, whatever I called in my name, I've created for my honor. And the Chachamim were able to rehire the base Garmu when they realized that they needed their talents and they couldn't do away without them. But again, you know, the base Garmu is now in the driver's seat. They realized that the Chachamim are desperate to rehire them. There's no one else who could do that job. And they can now jack up their prices. And therefore, you know, they didn't show up so quick. Let's let's negotiate over here. 
and then kaflim scharen. But the chacham decided we'll double your schar, and that attracted the base garmu, and they agreed to come back, and they were rehired. Oh, yo, before they were fired in the old days, so you know the Shnema somewhere, they only took 12 months. And Hayom, but now that they were rehired and they were in that position of, of, of power, is Esther and Viarba, we doubled their, their wages, and now it was 24 months. Now, Rashi points out that we're talking about a very large of money. Uh, for a daily uh, wage, but Chazal were, were desperate. Before they were fired, they would get 24 mana. And now that we rehired them on their terms, our boy, we double it to 48. Why is it that you didn't want to share your knowledge, your expertise regarding the Lechem with others? And the Chacham here were assuming that maybe they, they could be Malamed Schutz and find some sort of defense and justification to defend the position, the actions of the base Garamel. We have a tradition that was passed down through our father. Shabais Bayez said, This base on Migdash, Osid Lichar will be destroyed. And at that point, the Jewish people were spread out amongst the idol worshippers. Shema Yilmar Adam Shena Mahugan. And perhaps the knowledge, the secret uh, method will be uh, spread in such a way that it'll get into, into the wrong hands. The, the Yelech and somebody is going to take this expertise. Again, these were such special breads that the idol worshippers would probably want to imitate it and use it as part of their idolatry. However, even though the Chacham didn't accept their argument, they thought it was a fig leaf. But there was one thing about the base Garba that should be mentioned with Shvach, Maskinos or Shvach, and that is they would never pass on to their children bread that was made from fine flour, because that would look like Lechem him, and people spectators might suspect that they had, you know, taken away from the lechem upon him or created extra lechem upon him in order to feed their own family. He's feeding his children, his family, from the mice of lechem upon him. And therefore, by avoiding this chashad, they would fulfill the pasuk of Yisam Nekiyim that a Jew always has to ensure that his actions will not be suspect and he should avoid any chashod. So the same story. Maybe we can circumvent the monopoly, so to speak, of the base of Tinus who are hoarding this knowledge for themselves who will find experts from Alexandria will know how to create the Torahs. And they imported these experts, although they didn't know how to create this incense by adding all the different ingredients. However, they didn't have access to identify something that grows called Mila Asham, which makes the smoke go up vertically, rise. And therefore shall Allah misamer the Ola Kemakil, although in the base of Tinus, when they produced Ktores, the, the pillar of smoke went up like a stick. It was vertical. It was beautiful. Shall Allah, but on the other hand, those uh, experts from Mitzrayim, when they created a Ktores, just simply diffused in all sides, it didn't rise up as one vertical uh, uh, stick. And when they heard about it, that which God created was for the purpose 
of bringing out his glory. And therefore the base of Tinus who were endowed with this special talent, it was given to them by God as a gift for them to contribute their gift and knowledge to the glory of God. In this case, the base of Mikdash, base of Tinus and Koman. And now the Chacham make a decision. We have to rehire the base of Tinus. But again, this family is now in the driver's seat. They get oppressed for higher wages. It's only when the Chacham agreed to double their wages, that's when they decided they would agree to come back. Why is it that you hoarded your knowledge as to how to make the incense and its smoke rise vertically like a pole. Amru, they said, Yodim, Hayu, Shalbe Saba, we have a tradition in our family, the Migdash will be destroyed. Maybe this special secret knowledge will get into the wrong hands. And and he'll use it to serve his idolatry. There is one thing, however, that uh, we should remember them for the prayer to praise them. May a kala who went to the chupa who normally would perfume herself with cosmetics, but in the case of Beis Avtinus, they would not allow the kala to wear any perfume, so that no one would suspect them of using the Torahs for their own personal purposes. If let's say they would marry a woman in a different place, they would set up a condition in the marriage that she would not perfume herself because that fragrant smell, if she would do so, would perhaps arouse the suspicion of those around that maybe they were you know, taking off some of the Torahs for their own purposes. We learned to the Bryce on Rabbi Yishmoel, Pam Achas or Yisim Alpha Derkumatsasi, Echon mi Bnei Bneihem. I found one of, the, I came across one of the descendants of the, of the, uh, Beis Avtinus. On Martilo, I said, I will say a big shula harbos kvodon. Your ancestors were interested in. Self-aggrandizement, and they decrease the honor of the Ribonashlam, Akshav Kvod Makomo, Makom Bimkomo. Now, what what is left over here? Miat Kvodon. It's your honor is diminished because there's no base on big dash, you can no longer boast of your Torahs, and the honor of Hashem is in its place, as it says, Melochal Arts Kvodo. Um, Rabbi Akiva, Rabbi Akiva says that Sachli Rabbi Shmuel ben Loga, I heard the following story from Rabbi Shmuel ben Loga. Pamachas Yotzasi Anivi Echad Bneim. I was out in the with one of the descendants of Beis Avtinus, I noticed that this descendant of Avtinas was crying and laughing. Why did you cry? I saw something growing in the field and I reminded myself of the honor and the glory of my ancestors. Meaning, I saw something that could be used to create the Torahs. And he had the Mesora because he was a member of that family. I asked him, says Rabbi Shmuel, why did you laugh? Ultimately, we're going to get the third base on Migdash, and our family will be reinstituted, reinstated with that glory. So, at this point, 